Okay, today we're at Los Alamitos. Los Alamitos has been here 50 years. Historically, it was a quarter horse track. It shifted into both thoroughbreds and quarter horses about 20 years ago. Now it's looking like it very well may be the Southern California mecca of thoroughbred horse racing. By the time the Stronic Group gets done with uh, Santa Anita, Hollywood Park's gone. Del Mar is following Santa Anita's lead down the rat hole. Um, they've all recently uh, barred Jerry Hollendorfer from the grounds. Stunning. Here's a guy that starts over a thousand horses a year. He's won more races than uh, any thoroughbred horse trainer except two. In other words, he's the third all-time leading thoroughbred racehorse trainer in the history of the world. And uh, these wizards banned him uh, on a monkey see, monkey do, knee-jerk reaction without uh, really explaining themselves whatsoever. Sounds like big tech, really. Uh, these corporations are ruining thoroughbred horse racing. The mentality is ruining thoroughbred horse racing. And as I've been saying, we need to demand better racetrack management. It's not the animal rights activists. It's not drugs. It's not jockey whips that are ruining horse racing. None of that stuff matters. What matters is what's going on with racetrack management with these racetracks. Now, so far, Las Alamitas has uh, resisted a lot of stuff. But Las Alamitas is a, owned by a single individual who's uh, getting uh, well into his 80s, and uh, he has no heirs. He's leaving this property to the city of Cypress, California, which is where it sits. And when he goes, this place won't be long behind it. So uh, Southern California racing is in peril. It's in real jeopardy. It may not be here in uh, three to five years whatsoever. Let's go and check it out, see what's going on inside Las Alamitas. Fashionably fast. Waiting for Joe Jackson. They're all in line. Four minutes to race eight. Bringing Tiger up to the early top at nice going to the ground and fashionably fast. Slip so two up the back track. Joe no Jackson fell just in behind the seat four. Now the clear with two lanes off the lead. Scattered last of the three tech and wide. Three on the side side. Scattered eight. Not in battle. But only three lanes on the head. Bringing Tiger around. Back to the top. Back to the top. Bringing Tiger to the top. And it's over the middle. How are we doing? Good, thank you. We tend to win on the floor. Gotta support Hollendorf. Gotta support Hollendorf. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Thank you. All right. Oh my gosh, good to see you. I've been doing well. Yeah, how about deal. yourself? Not bad at all. Hey, this how are you? Karen. Nice to see you, yeah, Karen. Pleasure. I nice saw you here. I thought I'd just stop in. Yeah, and say nice hello. to see you. So, where are you at now? Uh, here for just a little while. Okay. But uh, I'm out. I'm on the outside. Okay, so we were at Los Alamitos today. Just got back in. And uh, I got to tell you, I was uh, pleasantly surprised with Los Alamitos. First time I've ever been there. And I wasn't expecting that. 
there were more people on the grounds and in the races and in the grandstand than I was expecting. I was pleasantly surprised. It wasn't, it wasn't packed or anything, don't get me wrong, but there was more people than I uh, was anticipating. Um, old school place, been around a long time. I said in the earlier part of the video, they've been around you know, 50 years, it's more like 70, closer to 70. And then they've run thoroughbreds there off and on since the late 70s. And um, a trivia thing here is my wife, Karen, was the groom in 1978 for the first thoroughbred horse that ever raced at Los Alamitos and won. So uh, she rubbed the very first thoroughbred horse that won at Los Alamitos in 1978. So just a little known trivia fact. Uh, go way back. Um, five, six horse fields. Why? Why? Why do we have five, six horse fields? It's killing everything. Um, there's no value on the tote boards, but people are still betting, which means the handicapper, the better the horse player, is still resilient. As much as racetrack management tries to crucify them with high takeout and short fields and pathetic customer service, they're still there. And they're betting 100000 a race on the win place and show pools. I was, I was amazed, actually. Now, let me just tell you a little, a little bit about Los Alamitos. The place was clean. Um, everybody was friendly. The restaurant, the food was good. Everybody in the, re in the concession stands was friendly. The gift shop lady was, could not have been more nice. The mutual clerks, they actually still have mutual clerks, real people, $10 to win on the four type thing. Uh, nice people. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The public sitting around, everybody was having a good time. I mean, it's not Saratoga. It's not Del Mar. It's not supposed to be. It's a working class racetrack. It's, um, it's a nice place. Water in the infield, palm trees, lakes. And let me tell you about the racing surface, which is one of the things I'm going to continue to harp on. The surface was deep. The surface was dark. The surface did not have a lot of concussion to it. When the horses ran by, it was quiet. The racing surface was at least four inches, maybe five which is what we've got to have to reduce breakdowns. Hard, fast racetracks are killing horses. It's not medication. It's not jockey whips. It's hard, fast, thundering, speed kills. Racing surfaces are killing horses. It has to stop. One of my main agendas here in this uh, YouTube channel is to demand better racetrack management all over the country, everywhere. Now, what I saw today at Los Alamitos was what looked to me like pretty decent racetrack management. And I gotta tell you, I was again surprised. There's people, they're betting, they're enjoying the races, but they're not being served much product. And by that I mean short fields, modest horses. There's a way to do better. Everybody's uh, pointing fingers at everybody else, saying it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's their fault, it's her fault, it's his fault. No, you gotta look in the mirror. The problem is in the mirror with horse racing. It is a self-inflicted death spiral that can be turned around. The problems are solvable, the solutions are available, it takes courage, it takes effort, and it takes a little, it doesn't take a lot of time, it takes a little bit of time. But now's the time to start because time is getting short. If this stuff doesn't change and change quick, it's gonna to be too late. Uh, they're, they're knocking these racetracks down like flies. They've ruled Jerry Hollendorfer off of um, Santa Anita, Golden Gate, uh, at Del Mar. Now, when I say ruled him off, they banished him from the grounds. There's no official ruling against this man. There is groupthink, there is knee jerk, and there's tons and tons of monkey see, monkey do here because nobody has any courage. They've also ruled Jerry off at uh, all the New York Racing Association tracks. The NYRA has ruled him off of Aqueduct, Belmont, and Saratoga. They're going to refuse to accept his entries. And again, there's no official ruling. They won't tell you why. They're just scared. These are spineless, gutless racetrack managements that are in a lockstep mentality. They're, de they're basically deplatforming Jerry Hollendorfer, just like what's been going on with YouTube uh, and social media with a variety of people uh, in the last uh, multiple months. Jerry Hollendorfer is being de-racetracked, basically, from uh, training horses. 
And there's no explanation other than shadowy, uh, quiet, no comment, all this kind of thing from these other racetracks that are uh, uh, deciding that he's not welcome. How do you not welcome a trainer who trains well over 100 horses, 100, 125, 130 horses, starts 1,000 horses a year? How are you not welcoming him onto the grounds? He fills races, he starts horses. Los Alamitos is um, welcoming him to their credit. Jerry Holl Hollendorfer, to my understanding, is a pretty damn good horseman. And um, <clears throat> you got a guy that starts thousands of horses a year, a thousand plus, let me just be a little more precise, a thousand plus horses a year for 25, 30 years on a 40 year career. Uh, hey, it's not that wildly uncommon to have overages for Butte. It's not a big deal. Horses metabolize medications at different rates. So a horse that got treated with Butte 48 hours out at the, on the advice of a veterinarian, that's enough time and it, uh, it doesn't clear. We're down to testing nanograms now. Nanograms are, 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 are not even hardly measurable or describable to you. So when a horse tests positive or has a Butte overage for a nanogram of Butte, uh, come on, that, that has to change. Or we have to go to no medication at all. Fine. Uh, everybody will adapt. Everybody will adjust. No butte, whatever. You're still going to have overages because horses metabolize medications at different rates. It's not cookie cutter. Uh, I'm, I'm a Lasix proponent, but you could reduce the amount of Lasix if you want to. Reduce it to two cc's. This is another whole video. We can talk about medication in another video. It's totally fine. Uh, there's a number of different ways this can be approached from the testing aspect, to the amounts, to the therapeutic levels, to the acceptable levels, to the non-acceptable levels, to the zero tolerance levels. That's all fine. But it's not medication, it's not jockey whips, and it's damn sure not the things that they're pointing at that are causing horses to break down. It is poor racetrack management and commercial breeders breeding for the sales ring instead of the race. And it's been taking a toll for a long time. It's got to change. Two-year-old training sales are a joke. They ruin more two-year-olds in two-year-old training sales than any two-year-old racing ever ruined. It's got to stop. There are fixes. There needs to be courage. We can talk about the courage. We can talk about where it needs to come from. We can talk about where the leadership really needs to emanate from. But that entity needs to wake up because they don't want to get involved, but they need to get involved. And they need to lead by example instead of walking around with their chin out and a smug look on their face and their hands in their pocket. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, Los Alamitos today. I was impressed. I was impressed. I wasn't expecting it, but I was. Um, it told me there was more hope um, for the average horse player and for the average racetrack than there appears to be. We just need to stop shooting ourselves in the foot because that's what's happening. Ask me anything. My email address is clint at don't get me started dot WTF. Clint at don't get me started dot WTF. Send me your emails, send me your questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can in the next video. Uh, may I get to them all, but I'm going to answer as many as I can. Uh, I'm going to answer as brutally honest. Because if you don't want the truth, don't get me started, as is the name of the channel. Because if I get started on something, I can't stop. Because I can tell you what needs to change, what needs to happen. And I can give you the honest answers to the questions you have. I've got no agenda. I've got no axe to grind. I've got the truth, and I've got the depth, and I've got the knowledge, and I've got the insight to tell you what you want to know. Not what you want to hear. I'm saying what you need to know. And I'll tell you what you need to know. See you next time.